Hi, welcome to Max tutorial number 19, recording and playing from buffers. So before I even make an object here, I just want to talk about what a buffer is. A buffer is an amount of memory that you set aside to store something in. So in this case, we're going to store some audio and that takes a certain amount of memory. So when we make a buffer, essentially what we're doing is kind of clearing an area. We're sort of fencing it off and saying, nobody else can use this. This is going to be used for this specific thing. And we give that specific thing a name, which is the name we give the buffer. So here we go. Let's uh, unlock the patcher, type in N and type in buffer. You see it fills in with a little tilde there. Great. I hit the space bar usually to just get past that. And then we need a name for it. I'm thinking maybe uh, Buffy McBuffer face. How about Buffy McBuffer? Um, okay, so there it is. Buffy McBuffer. I just had to make it more complicated than I needed to. Okay, but that's fine. That's fine. And then if you wanted it to load a file, you could type a file name in here with an extension, meaning like cello.aif, if you had such a file, and it would open it immediately. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to skip it. Then the tricky one, duration. This is duration in milliseconds. So I'm going to type in 2000 because that's a pretty easy quantity to work with. It's not too big, not too small, and we can check it to make sure it's working correctly. And then finally channels, we're going to have two. Okay, so there we go. Our buffer is named Buffy McBuffer, and it is 2000 milliseconds long. In other words, two seconds, and it has two channels. Great. That's it. We're done. We've got our buffer. We just put it over here and more or less we're done with it. But now we have to figure out how to get things in and out of it. So I'm going to lock my patcher for just a minute, and here's something you can do to check if there is anything in your buffer. Just double click on it, and hopefully <laughs> you'll find that there is nothing in your buffer already. If there is, you have duplicated another buffer. So if you find something in your buffer, um, you might want to change the name a little bit, make it Buffy McBuffer 2 or something like that. By the way, Anyone in my class, do not hand in a buffer named Buffy McBuffer. Okay, um, so we've got our Buffy McBuffer over there, and now we are going to find a way to get sound or uh, signal into it. So what we're going to use today is really the easiest thing. Let's um, unlock our patcher, type letter N, and write E Z A D C. Uh, what's it stand for? Oh, audio, digital. I don't know what it stands for, but it's a microphone. There we go. And then if you want to, um, yeah, you can. There it is. And um, they always have such nice ones in the help file. And I always encourage people to do this. I'm just going to option click on this. And oh, look at that pretty one with two meters on it already. That's so nice. Let's unlock our patcher, uh, our help file, and steal it. Command copy or control copy, if you will. And then close it because, and if it says, would you like me to save that? You say no. So we're going to delete that one and put in theirs that has the nice meters. And look, I'm going to put this in the middle because that's where I want it to be. So this is our input side here. We have our little microphone here. I'm going to lock my patcher a second. And you can turn the audio on and off up here by clicking on the microphone. So now it's off. The meters are frozen, but they're essentially off. They should go to zero, but they're, they're too dumb. They stopped measuring mid-signal, and there they sit. But you can turn it on, and you can turn it off. If you don't see anything here, what you're going to want to do is go up to audio, uh, excuse me, options, audio status, and then Make sure that your settings here are correct. For a Macintosh core audio is usually good. The other option is add port, core, uh, add 
AD port audio, um, this is generally used when you're working with a DAW or something like Rewire, uh, unless you're using this with Rewire. Um, also works with Core Audio, but Core Audio is fine if you're on a Mac. Not sure what it is on a PC. It's probably obvious. Make sure you've got your built-in microphone or your regular microphone selected. And uh, I have some other things on here I don't want to select because, um, you know, they're either not hooked up or they're busy doing something else right now. So I'm going to just click my built-in microphone. And the output device for Max is my built-in output. Great. Nothing more to worry about. Close that window. And look, I can, I've got my levels going now. Okay. Now we're going to want to be able to control the amount of sound that we're going to record. So I'm going to type the letter, excuse me, I'm going to unlock my patcher. I'm going to type the letter M N again, and I'm going to put a live gain in here. And the reason that I like the live gain is that it comes in stereo. And um, I, I like, I like that quality. I also, um, for today's, for today's work, I would also like this to be horizontal. So I'm going to go over to the inspector here and, um, where is it? Uh, here it is. Orientation vertical. Horizontal. There we go. So now that we've got our live gain there, we can click on the bottom of the easy ADC and run that over to the leftmost inlet, channel one. It pops up and it says it's channel one. I always like to watch them while I'm doing that. And then channel two goes over here to channel two. And um, very good. So now we've got a microphone, we have a volume control, and now we need the object that will actually do the recording. Um, and if we type the letter N to get a new object, and we type record, I know, big surprise there, right? Record, hit the space bar, and now look, what is the buffer name? Um, <laughs> if you can remember that, Buffy... Nick buffer, right? How many input channels? Oh, two. Why not? Now, we may find, maybe, that we're not actually using uh, two input channels. It's more or less a guess on my part, but it looks like it's using two input channels, so I'm going to go with it. Okay, leftmost outlet says that it is channel one. I'm going to connect that to the leftmost inlet of record. Next one over, second to left, says it's channel two. I'm going to connect that to the second to left inlet of record, and it says it's channel two. It's nice that it, it uh, reinforces what you're thinking with those little notes. And then, so now we have uh, sound coming in, we're able to regulate it, here's the thing that's going to record it, and now we just need something to tell this to turn on. So to me that sounds like a toggle switch, uh, that usually works, oops, I just locked my patch, I didn't mean to do that, and I'm going to hit, and uh, now I unlocked it again, there's a T for toggle, and we just run that to the leftmost inlet also, lock our patcher, and now we are going to do a test, Houston. Yes, a test. Um, <clears throat> you will recall that I said that this is going to record for two seconds. So I'm going to click this here and start recording, and then I'm going to count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. I did that just to sort of test the idea that supposedly a buffer just stops recording when it's full. So we're going to see what happens and double click this, see how our buffer is doing. And it looks like we've got recording here and it goes right off the page of Buffy McBuffer. Okay, Buffy McBuffer, thank you. So 
We now have sound in our buffer, but we don't have a way to get it out and play it. So essentially we need to, kind of, to recreate this whole thing here, but in reverse. So let's come down here, unlock our patcher, and say um, I want to be able to play something. So I'm going to hit the uh, little bit, type the letter N, start typing play, got it, play. Hit the spacebar and surprise, surprise, it wants a buffer name. Buffy Nick Buffer. And the number of output channels, two. There we go. And um, so now I guess we could use another gain object down here. I'm just uh, option clicking on that and dragging it down here. And we hook up the channel one output to the input leftmost of live gain. Uh, the second one, I believe, is out channel two output. It is, and we hook that up to, there it is. Also says channel two. And then we need another toggle. Let's bring that on down. I'm just option clicking on it. Could that possibly be easier than typing letter T? I doubt it. It's just a habit of mine. And now, if we have a microphone up here, what do we need? A speaker down here. So we type letter N and we type EZ DAC. And there it is. And we get the little speaker guy there. And hello, 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 there they are. So there's the output channel one, hooked onto there. Uh, come on, live gain. It's not, it's not uh, showing its dots there. And then uh, channel two coming out. And now, with any luck, um, we can lock our patcher, and I'm going to turn this down and try it, and then we'll turn it up to the middle and try it. There we go. There's all, there's down, so that it, just to make sure we don't blow the speakers out or anything. Here we go. Yeah, so I can see that it's saying something, but I can't hear it, so I'm going to turn it way up. It's quite quiet. One, two... Okay, so you hear me say one, two, and that's because the buffer filled up. So um, what can we do about that? We can come over here to the buffer and unlock the patcher and say, let's just test it and make sure we're right then. So if 2,000 is two seconds long, let's make it 6,000. And I'm going to lock the patcher again, and now I, I want you to notice something. Because I changed the number to a max object, it, whenever you edit the name in any way, it thinks it's a completely new object. So it erased everything that was in it. Keep that in mind. Um, but now we have this spanking new Buffy McBuffer buffer that is now six seconds long. So let's uh, give it a try. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Okay, you get the idea. And here we are trying it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, so I can count to seven in six seconds. But so you have to be uh, careful to make sure that your buffer is the right size that you want it um, for the recording that you're doing. And this is how you get sound into a buffer and sound out of a buffer for Max. I will catch you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.